the middle of lockdown, Black Lives Matter happened. How did it impact you? Um, it, you know, the Black Lives Matter movement for, for Black people, it's like, that's our lives, you know, as Black people, as, as people of color. It's, it's not just a movement. It's not just a moment. It's not a fleeting thing. Um, it's our lives. And so I think it affected me as much as it affected any other, um, you know, person of color. But I felt for me, the most important message was to have everyone be a part of, you know, the voice for Black, for the Black Lives Matter movement, not just Black people or people of color, but everyone, um, because it was a humanity crisis. And so I, I did, I struggled, I struggled a lot when it was happening at first. It was just so much anxiety, so much stress and, and frustration. And for all of this to have been happening during a pandemic when we were on lockdown made it even you know, worse. Um, but I will say that a lot of people stood up, a lot of people used their voices, um, a lot of people helped, you know, with the Black Lives Matter movement. And so I was happy to just see, um, you know, a little bit of, of unity there happening. Um, I mean, I wish I could have seen more, but I think we are, we are slowly, you know, getting somewhere. I think so too. Um, let's go to a wonderful moment your return to South Africa as Miss Universe. <laughs> what was that like? Tell me. Oh, that was like one of the most beautiful times for me because, I mean, I remember being on the flight as we had just landed. Um, you know, one of the air hostesses comes to me and, and she was like, aren't you like even a little bit overwhelmed and nervous because there are like hundreds and hundreds of people waiting for you outside. And I was like, hundreds, what do you mean? So I think I went onto social media and I just saw, you know, this flood of people at the airport just waiting for me. And it was raining that day. And so I was so grateful that, you know, they were able to come out in the rain to see me. Uh, but also rain for me is, you know, it's a sign of, of blessings from, from God, from my ancestors. I was like, it's just such a beautiful moment. And I had been seeing support on social media, but to actually see it in person, to see those young girls in their cute tiaras and their sashes just out there, just cheering and, and, being, and being happy for the moment. Because when I was on stage, I said I wanted young girls and women to look at my face and, and see their faces you know, reflected in mine. And I could see it. I could see it in their faces. And it was the most beautiful thing I had ever witnessed. I'm getting all emotional here. <laughs> um, I have to ask you about your walk. When you walk, it's like the whole world stops. Oh, um, <laughs> it, it's so incredibly powerful because it's like, really, this is who I am. And you, you, you flow. Was that something you had to work on? Where does that grace and courage come from? This is so interesting because I didn't actually get a lot of time to train for Miss Universe because I only had three months from Miss South Africa into Miss Universe. Um, I won in August and I had to leave the country in November. So it was just so much happening. I had to have my homecoming from Miss South Africa. I had to do my job as a Miss South Africa. So I didn't get a lot of time to train for that. So I, d I don't know. I don't know where I could say that comes from. Maybe it's the way that I carry myself naturally. And so it was able to just, you know, come out on stage as well. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Uh, many of the Maybe it goes like, sorry, maybe it goes with, I like to say I get confidence from my mom and my dad. They're just confident people. And so you see it in their stride and their walk and their aura. And so I think that's just where I got that from. <laughs> um, it comes across beautifully. Uh, many um, Miss Worlds from South Africa um, somehow stay in South Africa. The Miss Universes seem to um, explore the world. What, what are your plans after this year? My plans are definitely to explore the world. You know, the world has become so much smaller with technology. We can literally find ourselves anywhere at any time. I will be returning home to South Africa uh, to lay the groundwork and to build again from up there because people know me as Miss Universe. And now it's time for me to, you know, build myself as, as Zozi. And I think the best way to do that for me 
um, is to do it at home, to start at home. But I will definitely be all over the world just because I'm based in South Africa. I'm not just only going to be there. Uh, you know, hopefully by God's grace, we are over the pandemic already so that we can find ourselves in, in the world again. What was the most surprising thing about the year, I'm not talking about COVID now, I'm talking about being Miss Universe. What was the su most surprising? What was the best? And what was the, the toughest? Yeah, I think the most surprising thing and the most beautiful thing is how people open their hearts to you. You know, they open their homes to you and they've never even met you. I think that for me is so incredible how someone can show you so much love and they're not even your family. I think that was the most surprising thing for me and the most beautiful thing. Uh, you know, sometimes even a little bit on the overwhelming side, because I'm like, I just feel like I'm just me, you know, this this young girl from South Africa and all of a sudden, you know, people are just welcoming me into their hearts. So I think that is the most purest, most beautiful form of love. And I was so happy to experience it. I'm so happy to continue, you know, experiencing it. Um, the hardest part about the year is that you are just open to scrutiny from everyone. Everyone has something to say about you. They don't hold back. It's just, you, they feel you're a public figure. And so everyone has opinions, whether they're beautiful or painful opinions, they will let their opinions be known. Um, and people can just openly dislike you, you know, for, for no reason. Um, I've experienced a, a huge, a great Okay, maybe not a great amount, but some form of, of racism here and there is one thing that, that this year opened me up to as soon as I won. There were people who made it quite clear, uh, you know, to me that they didn't want me here just purely from, you know, my skin and, and, and where I'm from. So oh, I'm that, so sorry. That's, well, uh, that's, you know, um, it's it's been an interesting year filled with love and, and, and sadness here and there. But, you know, the, the positives, were, were more than the negatives. And so I'm just, I've been so blessed and, and happy to be here. How do you get over something like that? Because you're right, everybody goes through it in one form or another. Um, my goodness, for me, I think the biggest thing is to always remind myself, why did I want to be Miss Universe in the first place? Why did, why did I start? For me, that it, it overpowers everything. It's like you wanted to make impact and here you are, you are making that impact. So if 1% or 2% of people aren't happy with that or don't want you here, that's on them. But, you know, the 98% that are, you know, welcoming you, that are being impacted by your messages and your work and the thing that you do, that for me is more important than anything. So that's how I get over it, by just looking at the bigger, you know, picture and focusing on the positives more than I do on the negatives. And I know that's difficult because you can get, 150 beautiful comments from people and you get just that <laughs> comment and it just kind of almost overpowers everything else and so I've just been training myself this past year to to focus on the good because there's so much good um you know in the world there's so much good that came from you know me being this universe I've received so much love and so I've just tried to focus on that part it's the only thing I can say to you, having gone through this myself, is when people are mean, it usually comes from a place of pain for themselves. Or if you can turn that around, no, it's not personal. Um, talking about how gorgeous you are, I follow you on social media, and you always are impeccable. So just for the young ladies out there, do you have a favorite designer what do you wear when you're not on camera? And just talk about what clothing and fun, something light means to you. Yeah. Um, when I'm not on camera, I am wearing sweats and like shorts all the time. I, I like just loose, comfortable clothing at home, <laughs> whether it's big t-shirts or just sweats. That's what I'm doing when I'm when I'm not um, you know, working. But when I step outside, I just like to look my best all the time. It doesn't matter. I could be going out with friends or for lunch. I will dress up for that occasion because I just I just love 
I just love dressing up and looking pretty. Um, my favorite designers, oh, so many, but I'm enjoying uh, a lot of South African designers at the moment. Richard Nisi is one of my favorites. Tebe Magugu, one of my favorites. Um, it's just so many, but I, I can't, not a lot of them are coming to mind right now, but those top two for me are just like, I love them so, so much. What do you think is the biggest lesson that you've learned as Miss Universe? Um, sure, so many lessons as Miss Universe, but I think I would say my biggest lesson as Miss Universe is that if I will it and if I want it and if I work hard for it, there's nothing in the world that can stop me from getting it. And that was the biggest lesson for me winning Miss Universe. I was like, I saw it, I wanted it, I put it out there in the universe. And I was like, I'm gonna work hard and I deserve it as much as everyone else. And so I think that was the biggest lesson I learned from just becoming Miss Universe. And that's what I tell people as well, that nothing is, is far-fetched. There's nothing, nothing is meant for certain people. Cause you know, sometimes we're like, oh, this is not meant for me. Maybe it's meant for certain stars or for you know, certain privileged people. No, it's meant for all of us. Like for all of us, if you want it and if you will it, you can have it. I think that was my biggest lesson just from this whole journey. I love that. We're about to wrap up. Um, what is your message for South Africa? My message for South Africa is I just want to see us grow better in, in our unity. Um, I know we are called the rainbow nation because of how diverse we are. But, you know, there's certain times where I felt like there is no rainbow nation because people are just always, you know, fighting with, with each other and things are just always sometimes not going right. But what I want to say to South Africa is I, I wish we could live up to that. I wish we could, you know, just, just do better in making sure that we are that, that we are this beautiful country that is full of, you know, acceptance and, and tolerance for each other because we are a beautiful people. We really are. And it's one of the most beautiful places with the kindest people in the world. And I want us to continue living up to that. Well, you are a great role model. I just want to take a second to thank you because you have represented South Africa so well. And also for women everywhere, your message that you've propagated in the world is an inspiring one. So thank you for being you, and I hope to see you in person one day. Thank you so much. I hope to see you too, Margaret. I'm just sad that I haven't seen you in person all this time, I but I it. it will happen. I look forward to it. Have a wonderful future. Thank you. Bye. Bye now.